Sometimes I like to play with the audio settings on my video editing software. You know, like maybe put an echo on my echo voice, on my voice, my voice, on my voice, my Stop it. There, that's better. Greetings, one and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. By the way, I invite you to hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up if you like what you see, share this video with your friends, and leave me your thoughts down in the comments section. I'd really appreciate it. So yes, I have made you wait so long for the last couple of chapters of my Hold On CD collection that I just felt like cranking another one out. Uh, this is going to be chapter 20, I believe. Uh, yes, this is actually August 6th, Sunday, uh, but this video isn't going to appear until probably maybe even a, mon a month later. Maybe not that long, but uh, yeah, I just felt, hey, if I'm going to if I'm in the mood to crank one out, I'll crank one out. And so, by the way, that will explain if something traumatic and huge has happened in the world in music or the world in general, uh, and I'm not mentioning it, that's because from where I'm recording this, it hasn't happened yet. So anyway, <laughs> disclaimer, I guess you'd say. But anyway, so yes, chapter 20 of my Hold On CD collection, I show you 90 of my CDs, or 90 titles, that is, uh, Guilty Pleasures, Not So Guilty Pleasures, and all. Uh, before we get started, I have just two uh, recent arrivals. These are the ones where uh, the CDs that have arrived in my collection before uh, the place in the alphabet that I pick I'm picking up from here. Uh, I will show them to you. That's what I'm doing here. Uh, first one is Con Can, uh, their first album, Move to Move. Now, uh, I believe it was in a bargain bag video last year. It might have been earlier this year. This is a Canadian dance pop group from the early 90s, late 80s. 1989 is this. This was their debut album. I got their sophomore album, uh, which I, I can't... Oh, Syntonic, I think was the name of it, in a bargain bag. And I liked it so much that I just kind of had on my mental wish list uh, to get their first album. And this was actually at uh, Epic Seconds a few weeks ago. So picked it up, and it's just as much fun as their sophomore album. And so, yes, those of you who are uh, Canadian music fans, uh, you will recognize, you may recognize this group. They are a Canadian group, and their name, Con Can, is a variation on Can Con, which is Canadian content. That's a, I believe it's actually a law or a statute in Canada where they have to play, I believe it's 30% of what they play on the radio has to be Canadian artists. So to, to you know, give their homeland artists the credit they, the credit and airtime they deserve. Why not? And anyway, the second one, uh, and the second of two in my recent arrivals, is yet another one by Todd Snyder. This is The Devil You Know. This is his, like, fifth or sixth album. I've got his first three and then this one. So I've got a gap uh, in there of one or two albums. But yeah, I have yet to be disappointed in any of his albums. Uh, so And this, this actually, this one was already uh, also at Epic Seconds. So um, not long before I found Concan. So, yeah. Uh, Todd Snyder, a great artist and born and raised in Oregon. And uh, as I mentioned before in last chapter, chapter before, um, it was actually Noah, uh, my good friend, little brother from Oklahoma, who clued me into this guy. I had no idea. And he was born and raised in Oregon, uh, Todd Snyder. So completely off my radar and somebody from halfway across the country brought him to my attention. Go figure, huh? Anyway. My throat is unusually dry today, so a quick drinky poo, and let's go ahead and dive into this next block of 90 CDs. We left off with uh, Super Heavy. That was a, a genre-bending group, they kind of a uh, super group that kind of merged three or four different genres together. Interesting stuff. Uh, so we're picking up this one with another super artist, Super Tramp. Uh, we have Crime of the Century, and these are the remastered versions. Uh, this one I don't think has any bonus tracks, though. And then their follow-up album, Even in the Quietest Moments. And yeah, this I don't, I don't think these remasters had any bonus tracks, which is a little unusual for rem remasters. And then Breakfast in America, they're uh, the next one. And yes, these are the only Supertramp albums that I have. 
because uh, they they contain the singles that I was most cared about uh, having in my uh, yeah I used to own a greatest hits collection and that's something that I've done with quite a number of artists over the last few years is uh, gotten rid of their uh, greatest hits collection and just picked up the studio albums that contained the singles that I was interested in so now this next one you've all heard of super tramp but this next one is one that you have probably not heard of uh, he went by the name of sway uh, he was kind of a Oh gosh, he had hip elements of hip hop, elements of uh, dirty pop, and you know, industrial rock. And just, he was really kind of a genre bending artist. Kind of speaking of super heavy, um, and he was kind of ahead of his time. This is this is Espen Lind. A few chapters ago, I was talking about Espen Lind. He's a Norwegian artist. He is actually one half of the production and songwriting duo Espionage. This was his very first project. He just went under the name Sway, and it was very much more, much more cutting edge than Espen Lind does. Uh, did under his own name, he does, did much more straightforward pop, sophisticated pop, but pretty much straightforward. But yeah, uh, when he went by the name of Sway, he just kind of did, or at least under this first album, mm, "Prepared to Be Swayed." Uh, very weird stuff. The lyrics were really suggestive and kind of hardcore almost. So uh, yeah. I mean, like I said, it was kind of ahead of its time, So, and also because it was Espen Lind is the reason that I've kept it all these years. And I can't remember how I found out. I'm sure I just kept reading up on, enough on Espen Lind that I found out that this album existed, and so I picked it up. And uh, this will be an album that uh, looks familiar because it is the earlier version of an album under the same title that he did under his own name. Red is the name of the album, and I, I put it in a red jewel case. Uh, so yes, he did a version of this under his name Sway, and then a year or so later he did it under his given name Espen Lin. And most of the songs on here are the same. There are two two or three that are different, and most of the other ones that are the same songs, essentially, uh, have slightly different arrangements or mixes. So it was definitely, you know, being the Espen Lin fan that I am, I just had to have this. It took me a long time to track this down, but I eventually found it. I think it was on eBay and uh, got it for a relatively decent price. Um, I think now it's a little more common, commonly found than it was at the time that I bought it, strangely enough. Of course, when I bought it, I think that was before, maybe before Discogs had its own online store and it was just an inf information database. But yeah, now that you've got now that we've got Discogs along with eBay and and Amazon Marketplace, it's I think in my experience it's a lot easier to find stuff now to to buy music than it was mm, ten years ago. So yeah, sorry about the little diversion there from from the topic at hand. Uh, next artist we have up here is Matthew Sweet. Uh, yes, I had I picked up the regular version of Girlfriend, and then like. Two or three weeks later, my brother and I went up to uh, FYE up in Salem, and they had the uh, uh, deluxe uh, version of it. And it's got uh, the regular album as disc one, and disc two is a uh, uh, variation, you know, variations on the songs for uh, the album. I guess the album originally went by the name Good Friend, and he eventually did it, made it Girlfriend. I think so. I'm not well versed on that, so I may be wrong. Uh, next up in the Matthew Sweet category is uh, Altered Beast. I just recently got this one at, uh, actually it was at my last uh, thrift store crawl just a couple weeks ago. And yes, on the case, like down here in this corner, as well as on the CD, the previous owner was kind enough to scrawl his initials in Sharpie. But, as you can see, I was able to get them off with uh, hand sanitizer. Just put a little tiny bit of hand sanitizer on there and just kind of, you know, massage it into the Sharpie and takes a couple, it takes a couple minutes, but it came out. So, and then the last in the Matthew Sweet run is that I have is 100% fun. I picked up this album uh, many years ago, tried it out and didn't care for it. There was something about Matthew Sweet's voice that I didn't like at the time, but I have come to uh, appreciate it and appreciate his songwriting skills and all that stuff. So, yeah. Then we have uh, Cover Your Ears and Avert Your Eyes, Alyssa. Taylor Swift. 
inside joke. Uh, yes, Taylor Swift 1989. Uh, this is the only Taylor Swift album that I have on any format. Uh, I had one or two others. They just kind of shrunk on me. And Taylor Swift is an artist I have mixed feelings about. Uh, you know, she's good at, you know, singing and songwriting and performing and all that stuff. No, well, I don't know. It's way too convoluted a discussion to go in here in this video, so let's just keep going. Um, this next artist is one you probably have not heard of. They're called Swirl360. This is a uh, pair of twins, as you can, you can kind of tell they're twins. Their names escape me right now, but uh, very much um, pop. How, how do I describe it? Um, kind of like, not really like Smash Mouth, but uh, just very fun, almost Euro pop, kind of like um, Ace of Bass in a way. But they're, I believe they're American. Uh, but yes, yeah, very, very catchy pop harmonies, lots of samples, drum loops, that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, production is, I can't remember who, I'm not sure who produced it. Well, it was mixed by Tom Lord Alge. So, Early Hansen, you can hear a little bit of Early Hansen in these guys. Yeah, not, that's not meant to be off-putting. It's, you know, some people don't like Hansen because they're kind of, they seemed kind of juvenile in their early days. Uh, this is more sophisticated than that. But yes, very good stuff. Um, hey Now Now is was one of the singles. That's a pretty uh, catchy song. Um, Heaven is What You Make It. That was a pretty good song. Um, let's see. Can't remember. None of the other songs. It's been a while since I've listened to this one. So none of the other ones are jumping out at my memory. But this is the Japanese version. You see the OB strip there. It has one or two bonus tracks on it. So, uh, Next artist may be familiar to some of you. It is Switchfoot. Uh, this is their album, The Beautiful Letdown. And uh, yes, uh, Meant to Live and Dare You to Move are two of the really, really good songs on here. Um, yes, they do kind of verge on, um, they sort of border on Christian music, but their lyrics are not preachy. So Christians can get something out of the lyrics. Non-Christians can get something out of the lyrics, too. That, that's, that's the kind of Christian music I, like to I don't mind listening to. Uh, next album in their run that I have is Nothing Is Sound. Uh, the song Stars is probably my favorite song by Switchfoot. Love that one. Um, the Shadow Proves the Sunshine. That's a really good song as well. Uh, let's see, what else? There was another one I thought on here. I uh, can't remember. Lonely Nation is a pretty good song. Um, and then the third and final one of theirs that I have is Oh Gravity. Uh, title song is excellent. Uh, American Dream is, uh, it has thought-provoking lyrics. Uh, Dirty Second Hands is pretty good. Amateur Lovers and Burnout Bright is another good song. So nice kind of muscly guitar rock sound that they have. So yeah, good uh, good artist. Although that's the only, um, I've, I've tried listening to a couple albums of theirs since then. They just don't seem to have that magic that I thought they had in those three releases. So and next up we have, this is an artist from the 80s, pretty much a one-hit wonder. His name was Taco, and uh, the, the title track, Putting on the Wrist, Putting on the Wrist, no, Putting on the Ritz, uh, was his big, big hit. He was very much a throwback artist. Uh, he did like 30s and 40s songs, you know, jazz, Tin Pan Alley jazz stuff, but with, you know, modern, almost completely synthesized instrumentation. Very, you know... Kind of eclectic. It, it's it kind of screams '80s. It's kind of something that you would not be surprised to come out of the '80s. Um, but yes, they all, uh, he also did a cover of "Cheek to Cheek" and "Somewhere Over the Rainbow," "Winchester Cathedral." Some of the song choices are a little weird, but uh, it's been oh six months or so since I've listened to this. I got this last year at uh, Epic Seconds. Uh, there were a few songs, uh, original songs that I really enjoyed almost. As much as, as much as almost more than the uh, throwback covers that he did, uh, and I cannot remember what songs they were. I think they were the last two, uh, "Super Physical Resurrection" and "Got to Be Your Lover." Lover, I think those are the two that were. Uh, yeah, it looks like those are the only two that were that are not covers on the according to the track list. But uh, yeah, good stuff, fun. I like fun stuff as much as uh, 
unfun stuff. Uh, speaking of fun stuff, Take 5, a uh, boy band from the early 2000s. This is one of my favorite boy band albums. Uh, they, they had an inter a really cool, interesting sound. Uh, the pop sound that NSYNC and Backstreet Boys had, but with a little bit heavier uh, R&B influence. So if you if you like R&B in your boy band sound, uh, check this one out. I mean, uh, the, t the first track on here is called Shake It Off, not the Taylor Swift song. Uh, Taylor Swift's song is original. Um, Bounce is one of my favorite songs on here. Um, let's see. Can I Come Over? That's a pretty good song. That one was written by Diane Warren, as, as I, if I recall correctly. But, uh, yeah. A few few other good songs on here. Uh, Perfect Sense, that was a good one. So I I would recommend, if you like boy band music, uh, check out Against, El Against All Odds by Take 5. I'm having trouble pronouncing words today. I don't know why. Uh, then we have another... We have a few Take artists in here. Next one is Take 6, uh, their greatest hits. This came in an eBay lot that I bought uh, other stuff with. I can't remember... Actually, I can't remember what it was that I... The, the other stuff in the lot that I actually meant to buy. Uh, and Oh, yeah, oh, that's right. Uh, Angelique Kijo. One or two Angelique Kijo CDs and a couple other things. So, uh, yeah, this was one of the um, bonus inclusions that I didn't really uh, have my eye on having, but I listened to it and I kind of liked it. They're kind of a uh, sort of a doo-wop group with uh, pretty heavy gospel influence, you know, gospel Christian uh, songs. Uh, but yeah, I mean, some of them were pretty much overtly Christian, but still, the harmonies of these guys, just fantastic. Uh, excellent, excellent stuff. So, yeah. especially if you love vocal harmony, check out Take Six. Then we have Take That, a uh, one of the Classic, most popular British boy bands, pop groups uh, in history. This is their greatest hits um, collection from their uh, pre-2000 days, their, the, the first phase of their career, or when they were very much a boy band. Then they took a hiatus of, I think it was about seven or eight years. Uh, Robbie Williams left the group to go on and do his own thing. And then the remaining members of Take That reunited in 2006, I believe it was, and gave us this album, Beautiful World, one of my favorite um, albums of the 2000s. Um, it's, it's probably, I can't remember where it was in my 2000s uh, countdown list, but a fantastic album. And uh, I may have to put this, this is one I could put in my album diaries. I just, re, I just remembered there's a, a personal story I have with one of the songs in here that I guess I will have to make a note of that. Uh, note to self. Put Take That Beautiful World down as a uh, album diaries. Uh, but yeah, excellent album. Let's see, what were some of the other good songs on here? Um, Reach Out, the opening track is excellent. Uh, the title track is very, very good. Um, and yeah, great stuff. The follow-up album from that was The Circus, another excellent album. Uh, the Garden is really, really good. Uh... Oh, that's right, that song's on the next one. I was thinking of, where's that one song that I really like? It's on the not on this album. And How Did It Come to This? It's one of my favorite songs on this album. Check it out. So, uh, it's really good. And the follow-up album is, and this is actually, they put out an album and then a sequel EP. And this is a package that contains both. Uh, Progressed. The first album was called Progress, and then they put out a... Uh, is that like an eight-track EP? I think it was called Progressed, but this is both of them together. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the song "The Flood." That's the one I was I thought was on this one. "The Flood" is one of my another one of my favorite songs by them. I and mean, they just put out so much great, great music. They've been more prolific actually in their current phase of their career than they were in their first phase. So, uh, and yeah. And in my opinion, they've put out such far more amazing music. Um, SOS is another one, another good song on here. Kids, uh, spelled with a Z. Excellent. And uh, Happy Now. And uh, this could possibly be my favorite of their, uh, their Phase 2 albums. And they actually, yes, Robbie Williams actually rejoined the group for this album. And they put out a couple albums since then. Uh, I used to own them, but they just uh, 
kind of started, uh, I guess, started just getting old to me after that. But I do have uh, Progress Live. This is a two-disc live set from their Progress and Progressed tour. So lots of great stuff on here. And I do have a, C a couple of CD singles. Uh, you'll recall in older chapters of my CD collection, uh, I when I have a couple of CD singles by a group, I, I put them in one of these two-disc uh, jewel cases and make my own cover art from a picture I find of the band and uh, put them, piggyback them in one jewel case. So this is these are the CD singles from Rule of the World, which is a, was a non-album CD single. And the song Patience had uh, like three B-sides on it. So, yeah. so yes, an excellent uh, boy band turned contemporary pop band. So good stuff. And then we have a classic from the 80s, Talking Heads, Remain in Light. And this one, as I recall, this one was on the freebie shelf. A few scratches on it, but it plays just fine. I mean, just one significant scratch. Yeah, there you can kind of see it right there um, toward the bottom there. But yeah, otherwise it was in spotless condition, plays just fine. And of course, once in a lifetime, the uh, hit track from there. Let me take a drink. I'm sorry. I need to... I'm a wee bit pouched. All right. <laughs> then we have another uh, group that uh, a lot of you probably have not heard of. They're called Tally Hall. Uh, these guys are kind of kind of whimsical and a little bit weird, kind of like um, not quite as off kilter as they might be giants. Those guys are really kind of uh, out there, not crazy, just you know very, just just very weird, you know. Um, but these guys, these guys have a lot of sense, of, a good sense of humor in their songs, more like bare naked ladies than like uh, they might be giants. But so uh, yeah, good stuff. Um, let's see. It's been so long since I've listened to so many of these CDs. I, uh, oh, Banana Man. <laughs> That's kind of, it's a Calypso song, so it's, in a way, it's kind of a musical descendant of um, Banana Boat Deo by uh, Harry Belafonte. And then uh, <laughs> there's a song called To Wove. It's track 10 on the track listing. See? To Wove. It's about the, uh, the protagonist being in love with twins. And they may or may not be alluding to um, the Olsen twins, Mary-Kate and Ashley. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. And I'm not sure what their age was at the time this album was released. So let's, well, I'll just leave that alone. Not get into that uh, possibly dicey thing. But um, yeah, I can't remember. There are a few other good songs on here that I enjoyed, but I just cannot remember what they were at the top of my head. But yeah, good stuff. And that's something I probably ought to do at some point is... A little list. I want to get into uh, starting next year. Just random lists of five or more, if if necessary, uh, if called for. Things you know, uh, like groups that have a sense of humor to their music, and Tally Hall would be in that list. I've got a, few, a handful of those. Uh, next artist is one that uh, you saw in my uh, favorite albums countdown last year, 2023. Tank and the Bangas. Uh, this is their uh, first album at least their first major label album, Green Balloon. They mix uh, soul and R&B in with hip-hop and sometimes just straight-ahead pop. And uh, I saw the CD for a long time at House of Records. It was just sitting there, thought about picking it up. I, uh, I must have streamed some of their songs, uh, but they had a little, a little too much hip-hop in them for my taste at the time. But... Uh, so I never picked it up until I sampled their uh, most recent album, Red Balloon, and really enjoyed it. And yes, they still have some hip-hop in uh, in their mix. Maybe not as much on this album as they do on Green Balloon, but uh, still. I mean, this was in my top 15, I believe, of my favorite albums last year, so I really enjoyed it. Uh, yeah. And yes, have to listen to this one a little bit more. But yes, excellent stuff. If you like stuff that kind of blends R&B, soul, hip-hop, and other stuff, pick them out. And yeah, I, I picked this one up, enjoyed it so much that I went back and picked up Green Balloon, which I think might have actually even been the same the same actual CD that ha they had gotten in all those you know, years ago and just maybe never sold. I don't know. But anyway, yes, excellent group. 
and the booklet is coming out of this CD here. Flappy, flappy, flappy. Anyway, uh, James Taylor with his album covers. Um, he's got green Sharpie on his face there and on his hat because this was in the 50 cent rack at, Ep uh, not Epic Seconds, Everyday Music uh, when I went up there in January, I believe. Uh, so yeah, picked it up and uh, yes, uh, it is of course a cover covers album. Uh, he does Wichita Lineman by Glenn Campbell and Why Baby Why by George Jones, I believe it was. Um, Hound Dog. And I'm not sure if this is if he uses the uh, Big Mama Thornton lyrics or the Elvis Presley lyrics in that. Uh, Summertime Blues. So, yeah, good selection of covers. And, of course, he would do a covers album again just a couple of years ago, which I cannot remember. Oh, uh, American Standard was the name of that one, which I really enjoyed. And then uh, we have the Essential James Taylor. Uh, absolutely two discs packed with... You guys know the deal with the Essential series. I uh, don't have to explain it to you. So, yeah. And uh, I've always thought about picking up his individual albums. I've got a few on LP, but uh, just haven't gotten enough yet to warrant getting rid of the Essential. Uh, this one I picked up, I believe it was at Epic Seconds, and I think it was like four bucks. Uh, one Man Band. Uh, his, it's a live concert CD and DVD, I, I believe. Yeah. CD. Yes, disc one is the music CD, and disc two is the concert DVD. So, yeah, not bad at all for four bucks, and the discs are in perfect condition. So, yeah. Then we have another James Taylor, different James Taylor, JT Taylor. This guy was from Cool in the Gang, or or Earth, Wind, and Fire. Cool in the Gang, I think. Uh, yes, very good R and B artist. He was in this one was in a uh, bargain bag earlier this year, late last year. Uh, pretty good stuff. Then we're getting into some Tears for Fears. We have uh, the album The Hurting, their debut album. And yes, this was, uh, if you'll recall, this one and Songs from the Big Chair. Both of them, the uh, deluxe two-disc CD editions, were in my list of, they're actually my number one, favorite purchases of 2022. So yes, found them on an eBay lot for both of them for $60. Uh, which and they were new and sealed, and you were hard pressed to find one of them for uh, forty bucks used. So I got a pretty good deal, I think. But yes, of course, and anybody who knows eighties music, this is classic stuff. Mad World, the song that has been covered quite famously in uh, recent years. Uh, Pale Shelter is a fantastic song. Uh, Change is another excellent, excellent hit. One of my favorite songs of the eighties. So. Yeah. They are an excellent group, and they're still at it. So yes, the songs from the big chair. This might be uh, this might slightly edge out the hurting as my favorite Tears for Fears, Tears for Fears album, Shout, and Everybody Wants to Rule the World. They're two big hits, and uh, Head Over Heels. I love Head Over Heels. That one is probably my favorite Tears for Fears song, with uh, Change being my second favorite. Um, and yes, this has a ton of b-sides and alternate remixes and single versions uh so i guess i'll show you the track listing for the other one too so yes excellent uh, uh a veritable cornucopia of uh cheers for fears and this one this one's going to be a little bit harder to read but yes b-sides and remixes are packed onto disc two so yeah very good stuff and then going on through their discography we have the seeds of love uh, still a good album. They started going a little bit downhill in, at least in terms of popularity. Uh, they were still making good music, I think. Uh, Sowing the Seeds of Love, the title track, is excellent. Uh, it's the only song that I remember off the top of my head. And then the uh, these next three albums are just ones that I recently picked up uh, because I picked up the one you will see at the end of the Tears for Fears uh, listing. Uh, Elemental... This was after, I um, can't remember what his name was, left the group, and Tears for Fears was basically just uh, Roland Orzabal. Kurt Smith was the guy that left the group to do a solo career. And then uh, Raul and the Kings of Spain is the next one. Then uh, this one, I believe, is uh, they reunited for uh, this one. Everybody loves a happy ending. Uh, but then it wasn't their happy ending because just last year they came out with the Tipping Point, an excellent album. 
their best album since their 80s albums. So it's fantastic stuff. So yeah, pick that one up, or give that one a listen if you have not yet. Great stuff. Then uh, going on to... Well, I'm already 30 minutes in. i got to pick up the pace here. Uh, then we have Technotronic, a classic uh, 90s, 90s, I believe, early 90s, dance pop album. Uh, Pump Up the Jam. Excellent stuff. Uh, yeah, Pump Up the Jam, the title track. Get Up Before the Night is Over, another excellent track. Uh, this beat is Technotronic. So yeah, they've had they had a few hits. They were kind of like a, a CNC Music Factory. They had a good a good a few hits there in the '90s. And then we have some Motown here, The Temptations. Gotta love Motown. Who doesn't love Motown? I mean, come on. If you don't love Motown, there's something wrong with you. Okay, if you don't at least like Motown, there's something wrong with you, in my opinion. Then we have. By the way, if you want to know anything more about any of these CDs that I'm talking about, if I go through them quickly. Drop me a link in the comment section. I can always do a Tom's Hold On CD Collection by request. Spotlights thing. Uh, then we have a two-disc set by They Might Be Giants. It is called Then. It contains uh, three, no, two of their uh, albums. Uh, their self-titled album, as well as Lincoln. And I, I've thought about replacing this one with the individual CDs. At some point, maybe I will. But uh, Lincoln is one of my favorite they Might Be Giants albums, probably my second favorite, but my favorite is Flood. This is fantastic stuff. Um, Birdhouse in Your Soul is a, cla a classic track in terms of They Might Be Giants. And then they do a cover of the novelty song from the 50s, Istanbul, Not Constantinople. Uh, that's one of my favorites. And then Particle Man is another good song. And this one has a... Oh, it's, uh, I piggybacked the Istanbul, not Constantinople CD single. There. And there it is, and it has, I put the inlay card from that inside of the other one. So it's got a couple of uh, B-sides. So Fun stuff. And then we have, uh, from Matchbox 20, Rob Thomas. So we have his uh, solo album, his debut solo album, Something to Be. Very good stuff. I really enjoy that one. And is this one? Yeah, this one's piggybacked. It is the dual disc, uh, but it's no longer in its original dual disc container because it is piggybacked with the Something More EP. So, yeah. Cool stuff. Now we are getting into one of my favorite artists. Uh, not a lot of people know about this guy, and it, that is just a crime because he is fantastic. His name is Teddy Thompson. And he is he's actually the son of Richard and Linda Thompson, the folk artists from the 70s. So, uh, yes, a British guy here. But I won't that hold, hold that against him. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Uh, sometimes British, British artists are the best artists. And sometimes Canadian artists are the best artists. But anyway, yes, this is his self-titled album. Yes, yeah, self-titled. Uh, but he took like a four- or five-year break before he put out his sophomore album, Separate Ways, and, uh, you know, I'm not, I was going to say this might be my favorite album of his, but I'm, I'm honestly not sure. It's, it can be, it can change depending on my mood. And this, what does this have on the back of it? It has a, oh, it's actually a bonus DVD of, um, Verve Music Group Artists, uh, music videos. So yeah, I found that, can't remember where I found that. Oh, it's got Liz Wright. I'd forgotten. I got this, um. And since then, I've become a fan of Liz Wright, so I forgot that she was on here. Uh, Jamie Cullum, Susan Tedeschi, uh, Teddy Thompson, of course, Rufus Wainwright, uh, Rhett Miller, Jackie Green, Elvis Costello, and Alan Toussaint, and Gladys Knight are the featured music videos on that uh, DVD. Very cool. But yes, this album is amazing. Um, I Should Get Up is it's a great demonstration of his very uh, wry and self-deprecating sense of humor. So if you like that kind of sense of humor... Check it out. Uh, check out his album. Uh, Everybody Move It is another really good song. Uh, Altered State is a excellent one. So, And You Made It was another really good song. So, Then he did a covers album of classic country songs, Up Front and Down Low. Country comes up with the best song titles and album titles. So, uh, yeah, well, I won't go into the track listing on here. Uh, but, yes, yeah, just suffice to say, it's a bunch of old country songs. 
This probably is in a constant uh, flip-flop with separate ways for my favorite Teddy Thompson album, uh, A Piece of What You Need. Yes, and this is the UK edition. The American edition, if you're ever out looking for it, has a different cover on it. It has a close-up of his face. So, but yes, I found this at um, Music Millennium, maybe? Uh, and it was in the Super Super Jewel case, which I always love the Super Jewel cases. So I had to pick it up and uh, replace the American edition with this one. Same track listing. But uh, What's This is, that's my favorite Teddy Thompson song. It is, it's funny and it's, it's just so catchy. One of the most seriously catchy songs you will ever hear is What's This by T Teddy Thompson. Uh, In My Arms is a really good song. Uh, Can't Sing Straight is very fun. Jonathan's Book is another fantastic song. Yes, this may be my, uh, my favorite Teddy, Teddy Thompson album. What's This and Jonathan's Book. Listen to those two songs. And then uh, his next album is Bella. This is a little bit more understated. His, uh, yeah, A Piece of What You Need was mostly more upbeat. This one is a little bit more um, subdued. Uh, Looking for a Girl is a really good one. Delilah is a fantastic ballad. Uh, Tell Me What You Want is a really, really great song. Uh, the One I Can't Have is... I mean, Obviously, I'm a Teddy Thompson fan, okay? This this guy is just... He's amazing. He's excellent. Now, we are halfway through today's block of CDs, so... Take a drink for one thing. And for another thing, <clears throat> let's keep going, or this video is going to be insanely long. Uh, then we have the Thompson Twins. Uh, this is a singles collection, uh, platinum and gold collection. It's got all the popular th songs on here. In the Name of Love, Lies, uh, Hold Me Now, Doctor, Doctor, Lay Your Hands on Me. Then we have a CD. This was in, actually, no, there was a different version of this in my sister's uh, CD collection. Uh, it's a, a super group, basically, called The Thorns. And they were, shoot, Matthew Sweet, um, Okay, let me see if I can get this out of here. Matthew Sweet, Pete Droge, and... Sean Mullins. Yeah. I actually didn't have to look it up. It came to me. Matthew Sweet, Sean Mullins, and Pete Droge. Uh, excellent uh, folk rock. Kind of like the Eagles. And you, you kind of get that sense here on the uh, cover. But the reason I replaced the one my sister had with this one is... This is actually a two-disc set. It's got the regular studio versions on disc one, and it's got the acoustic versions on disc two. So, yeah. Had to pick that one up. But yes, uh, very good... Um, very good Thorns rock. Very good folk rock, if you like the Eagles. Uh, maybe if you like some Neil Young, more laid-back Neil Young, you like this one. Then we have a classic blues artist. She is, she is just excellent. Big Mama Thornton. Uh, the song Hound Dog. <coughs> excuse me. She did the original version of Hound Dog, the, the original hit version. The lyrics are very, very different from the Elvis Presley version. In my opinion, the Big Mama Thornton version of Hound Dog is leaps and bounds above the Elvis Presley version. Way better lyrics. And of course, she just... She just delivers a powerhouse rendition of it. I just love her stuff. She's just fantastic. Listen to the Big Mama Thornton version of Hound Dog, if you haven't yet. Then we have, speaking of, speaking of dogs, we have Three Dog Night. This is the Icon uh, installment of Greatest Hits Collection. It's got all the hits on there. But I have been thinking about uh, getting a little bit more in-depth into Three Dog Night, because I, I rather like them. And then we have... The Three Mo Tenors. Uh, these guys were uh, a variation on the Three Tenors, obviously, by their name. But they do some classical stuff, some opera stuff. They do some pop, some jazz. They, they're all over the map on this. I had picked this up a long time ago. For some reason, for whatever reason, didn't care, didn't care for it. I don't know where my head was at. And then it was in, I believe, a bargain bag last year, year before. Fell in love with it. So it's one of those things that didn't click at the time, go back to it, and it clicks. So, yes. Excellent stuff. Uh, if, if you like that lively kind of stuff, check it out. 
Then we have uh, somebody you've probably heard of, Justin Timberlake. Uh, this is this is actually the Australian version of um, his album Justified. Pretty sure it is. Anyway, and this has backed on it the uh, the Crimey River single. I love that song. You could listen to that song fifty times, and you would find little subtle things buried in the mix that you didn't hear the time before. So I obviously had to buy the CD single of a song. Nothing comes close to the original album mix, but uh, it's kind of fun listening to remixes as well. Then we have uh, Future Sex Love Sounds by Justin Timberlake. And then 2020 Experience Volume 1. Sorry, these CDs are kind of flopping over. I'm trying to... <laughs> They're slightly more overstuffed, these racks, than they usually are. That's why they don't have enough the room to uh, actually part when I'm going through them. So anyway, uh, 2020 Experience Volume 2. And yes, I do have uh, Man of the Woods. Eh. It, it was okay. I, I don't think it was as bad as a lot of people said it was. A little weird, a little interesting. But hey. Supposedly he's putting out another album this year or maybe next year. So looking forward to that. And then we have, actually, this is, uh, actually got this at, I believe it was, at um, Face the Music, which was a record store. You haven't heard me talk a lot about Face the Music. It was uh, very much closer to my workplace than House of Records is, and it closed back in 2005, unfortunately. So that's the reason I started shopping at House of Records. Anyway, uh, a this was a Target exclusive uh, EP of Justin Timberlake and Christina Aguilera. It's got a couple of album cuts, as well as a couple of remixes and a couple of B-sides that were not on either of their albums. So yes, Why, When, How is the Justin Timberlake song, and I believe... Um, I think That's What Love Can Do is the Christina Aguilera B-side. I might be mistaken. But yes, it's got remixes of Beautiful and uh, Rock Your Body. Oh yes, Rock Your Body is another fantastic... That's like the Michael Jackson song that Michael Jackson ne never did. Totally Michael Jackson vibe on this. Anyway, so yeah. Interesting little uh, EP there. Then we have some Toad the Wet Sprocket. Uh, this is Fear, their album uh, from 1991. Uh, All I Want is their big, big hit that was on this, that's on this album. And oh, I Will Not Take These Things for Granted. That's another really good song. Um, uh Walk on the Ocean. That was another really good song. And then I have their follow-up album, Dulcinea. And let's see. Something's Always Wrong. That was a really good song. And Windmills was pretty good. Windmills was in the end credits of a movie that I can't remember what it was now. A very, a, 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 uh, very obscure movie. And they would have to happen to have a Toad the Wet Sparkle song in their end credits. And, oh, Fall Down is another good song. But, uh, then we have a CD that I picked up. Um, two, it's actually been two years ago that I was at uh, out visiting Noah and Alyssa in Oklahoma. And on the record store crawl that Noah and I did, I found this one there. Uh, the Tokens, the, the very best of. We Away is their uh, most popular song. Very Lots of fun. That was a very fun album. And here's an artist that, uh, another artist you guys have never heard of, but one that I absolutely love, and I believe this was his only album, and I, I still am sad about that. Michael Tolcher is his name, and the song, sooner or later, was used as the theme song from a TV show. I think it was called Life As We Know It. It was a one of those uh, teen dramas, high school dramas. It was only on for one season, back in the... Early, well, the early, early 2000s, because this album was 2002, I think. But anyway, yes, uh, I love pretty much every song on this album. Uh, yeah, pick a song, and I, I love it. Oh, No One Above, is that's got a fantastic uh, funky groove to it. It's just irresistible. And, uh, yeah, one of my favorite, favorite albums ever and almost nobody knows about it. And then we have one from the 80s, the Tom Tom Club. 
that's another list I could do is uh, artists or albums that have my name in their in their names. Be kind of a lame list, but anyway. Uh, yes, their self-titled album, Tom Tom Club. Uh, Wordy Rapping Hood. Wordy Rapping Hood is the big hit. And so was Genius of Love. Uh, you you might not recognize that one by by its title, but you'll remember the song, Genius of Love. Uh, see? Very good song. And I just picked this up uh, less than a month ago. <clears throat> because I heard Genius of Love somewhere and decided, okay, I had to get that CD. And uh, Epic Seconds had it. Then we have... Oh, this this video is going to be long. Sorry about that. Then we have Tone Loke. Loked After Dark. Uh, yes, Wild Thing and Funky Cold Medina are his two big, big hits. What can I say? He's kind of cool. And one of the very few uh, hip-hop albums I have in my collection. Top Loader is a British, some might lump it in with Britpop band, but uh, I don't know. I've never gotten into the classically Britpop bands, so by that token, I don't consider them, I don't consider them Britpop, but I know you might. Anyway, uh, Unka's Big Mocha, I think is how you pronounce this uh, album title. Very strange album title. Uh, this was their more successful one. Uh, the song Dancing in the Moonlight was a big hit of, uh, of theirs. But I actually liked this album a little bit more, uh, Magic Hotel. Uh, see, Time of My Life, Cloud Nine, uh, Leave Me Be, and uh, The Promised Tide, and uh, The Midas Touch. The Midas Touch sounds like a song that would have fit really good as the the uh, song from a James Bond movie. It just kind of has that uh, epic, sweeping, ethereal sort of sound to it. Check it out. Anyway, uh, the, the next one here in my list is actually a four CD set that you saw in my May the Fours Be With You video, uh, the uh, the Mel Torme collection. So I'm, since I just talked about that one, I won't talk about it here. Then we have The Tractors. This is a band from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, a bit of a country, kind of a country pop band. Uh, and did I pick one or both of these? No, I don't think I picked these up in Oklahoma. I think I picked them up somewhere else. But yeah, they're kind of cool. And uh, there's a picture with the Tulsa skyline in the background. That's kind of one of the big reasons I've kept, especially this album of, of theirs. It's, it reminds me of uh, being in Tulsa, the good times I had with Noah and Alyssa, and their follow-up album, uh, Farmers in a Changing World. So uh, I can't, uh, couldn't name any of the songs off the top of my head uh, because I've only listened to these albums once or twice, but I do intend to go back to them. Uh, then we have a have an uh, artist that I have three albums from, Traffic, the classic Steve Winwood band from the 70s, uh, Heaven Is In Your Mind. This is their their debut, I believe. And uh, yes, Dear Mr. Fantasy was the big hit off of this one. Then we have The Low Spark of High Heeled Boys. These are all the, the remastered editions. And this one actually was... A gift, I believe, from Noah, which is kind of what got me started on uh, checking out more of Traffic. I like this one so much. Uh, John Barleycorn Must Die. So, so thank you, Noah. Thanks a lot for making me buy more CDs. Anyway, uh, and here we have uh, another another Canadian band. Did I talk about a Canadian? Oh, yeah, Concan. Another Canadian band here that uh, I've heard about a lot about for years. Never bothered, bothered checking them out until... And actually, this is another one that's, that's Noah's fault. Uh, the Tragically Hip. This is their uh, their debut album, Up to Here. Uh, their sophomore album, Road Apples. Or or I might have these two out of order, Road Apples and Fully Completely. I can't remember which one was their second and which one was their third. But uh, yes, those three I had to buy in an eBay lot because Noah gifted me with their more recent album, We Are the Same, and I really, really enjoyed it. And yes, I've, I've liked all three of these, uh, all four of these Tragically Hip uh, albums that I've heard so far. I've got a few more that I have not had the chance to listen to yet. So I got a uh, lot of like seven Tragically Hip CDs because it was at a good price. What can I say? How can you be at a good price? Anyway, I'm going to try and keep this video under an hour. Well, so let's move right along. Train uh, with their uh, album Drops of Jupiter. The title track was a huge hit of theirs and one of my favorite songs. Overplayed though it may be. And I had... A few of their subsequent albums, but when I saw this CD here, I decided, okay, 
the only songs I like off of all their other albums were the singles. So I picked up their greatest hits. And so, yeah. I used to enjoy their albums more, but they just kind of cooled off on me. So, But still, fun to listen to in moderation. And then we have, this one was, uh, I believe this was a thrift store uh, pickup, just uh, just for the heck of it, I, a blind or deaf buy. Christina Train, uh, Spilt Milk is the name of this one. Uh, kind of uh, slightly jazzy pop. Pretty good stuff. And then we're coming to an artist, that uh, contemporary artist that a lot of people have probably heard of. And some people, she's a polarizing artist. I've got to say, Megan Trainer. Uh, this is her debut album title, and this is the deluxe edition. Some people seem to love her. Some some people seem to hate her. She gets way more hate, I think, than she deserves. Uh, her sophomore album, Thank You, and this also is the deluxe edition. Oh, all of them, I believe, are deluxe editions that I have. And yes, Treat Myself, which may be her best album so far. That's pretty good. And then her most recent album, Taking It Back. This one was a little bit disappointing, but hey. In some ways, I just can't help but love her. I don't know what it is about her. Don't believe the hate that you hear about her. Check her out before you dismiss her. Anyway, coming up on the home stretch here, another six CDs after this one, The Traveling Wilburys. This is their uh, collection. There are two albums as well as a DVD. So yes, a... Uh, Supergroup with Roy Orbison, Tom Petty, Bob Dylan, uh, shoot, <laughs> uh, Bob Dylan, Jeff Lynne, Tom Petty, Roy Orbison, and George Harrison. Hey, at least I remember them from their faces. Didn't have to look up their names. But yeah, good stuff. Um, you would think they'd be way more ingrained in everybody's musical brains with a lineup like that, but they were kind of, their hits were kind of understated and not as huge and uh, massive hits as you would think they would be. So, go figure, huh? And then we have another uh, 20th Century Masters Millennium Collection, The Trogs. Uh, of course, uh, Wild Thing is their big, big hit. And let's see, what else is on here? Love is All Around. That's a very, very fun song. I really enjoyed that one. And I can't remember what else. Uh, don't think there were any other significant hits on there. Then we have KT Tunstall, an Irish artist. Uh, Eye to the Telescope is uh, her debut album. Very good stuff. And this is a deluxe edition that I found. I think I might have found this one at uh, Amoeba Records down in L.A. Uh, it's got a DVD with it. I think, yeah, DVD. And, uh, so yeah, back down in Amoeba Records, and the last time I was there was in 2009, so it's been a long time. Uh, so yeah, good stuff. Um, let's see, Black Horse in the Cherry Tree, that's a good song. Uh, Suddenly I See, that was some very fun, that was a really catchy one. So yeah, and I've got her sophomore album, Drastic Fantastic. I'm uh, not nearly as fond of this one as I am of her debut, but, uh, yeah. I do still need to give it a few more listens to make sure that, it, uh, see if it grows on me. But I really, really enjoyed her album, Kin. This, uh, her best album since Eye to the Telescope. And you'll notice that I'm missing a few KT Tinstall albums. But, uh, yes, let me see. What's the really, really good one? Um, Everything Has Its Shape. That is one of my favorite songs of that year and probably the two or three years uh, on either side of that year. Uh, beautiful song. <clears throat> it reminds me of a uh, Mamas and the Papas. So just kind of that that dreamy uh, Laurel Canyon kind of sound on that song. Everything has its shape. Fantastic. Uh, it took me so long to get here, but here I am. That's another good song. Uh, Hard Girls and uh, Turn the Light On. Bunch of good stuff on here. And then I also got, I can't remember where I got this one, but uh, the CD single of Black Horse and the Cherry Tree. Uh, did Noah give this one to me? I can't remember. Anyway. And it's got a B-side One Day, the, a live rendition of One Day on here. And wrapping up, 
this block of my Holder and CD collection is an artist that you may not have heard of, but you got to check out. Big Joe Turner. Uh, the song Shake, Rattle, and Roll. He's the one that made it famous. I'm sure a lot of people recorded it, but I think he was the one that made it really big um, on its uh, initial release. But uh, yes, he did lots of uh, covers of the blue songs that kind of you know made the rounds between all the artists at that time. Uh, but uh, yes, Okshimokshibop. That's another good song. Uh, TV Mama. I, I need to listen to that one again to see if uh, <laughs> what the lyrics are on that one. Uh, Boogie Woogie Country Girl. That's another good song in here. Uh, Flip Flop and Fly, which was pretty much just a, cop a carbon copy of Shake, Rattle, and Roll, just with different lyrics. But, uh, you know, they, they tended to do that a little bit back in those days. But, yeah, Big Joe Turner. Uh, fantastic uh, R&B and blues singer, one of the pioneers who kind of paved the way for rock and roll. So yes, give Big Joe Turner a try if you haven't yet. So uh, yeah, there we go. So yes, I guess that will do it for Chapter 20 of my whole darn CD collection. Be sure to like it if you liked it. And before you go, drop me some feedback in the comment section. I'd love to know what you think. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell icon to catch my new videos, and click my username to browse my old videos. Links to my socials and my favorite fellow YouTubers are in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music star.